Welcome to the UAUC Talk Show. Our goal with this show is to introduce you to the most interesting people with the most interesting ideas. Today we have a very, probably one of the coolest people I've ever met. The first day I met her, I asked, you know, the boring question, oh, like, what's your major? And she was like, I want to be a video game music maker. When did you know you wanted to do that? Uh, I have always liked uh, video game music. I've been a fan of like the Legend of Zelda soundtracks, uh, like Persona, all those. But I, over quarantine, uh, I was just at my desk one day doing homework, and I was listening to video game soundtracks uh, in the background, just on YouTube. And there was uh, one from uh, Kingdom Hearts, just a nice like orchestral sounding one. And just listening to it, I just sat there and thought, like, I want to do that. I really, really, really want to do that. And so that moment, I uh, did all the research to make sure that I could go to college for making music. Okay, so quarantine happened. Most people, you know, went home and everything. What exactly did you do? Because, like, okay, you were listening to the song and the music and everything. But what exactly inspired you to do that? Because I also listen to... Uh, like soundtrack, especially Hans Zimmer. I love that. It's a little different from movies, but I, I really like the, the soundtrack. But I didn't decide to become uh, what you did. So like, what exactly inspired you to do that? I think at this point in time, at this point in time, I was a junior, because I'm, I'm a freshman now. Um, I was a junior and I kind of was lost with what I wanted to do. I had wanted to do uh, environmental science at first, but as uh, high school progressed, I kind of just got more distracted from what I had wanted to do. And when junior year came around, that was when, you know, you start looking at colleges and you start looking at major plans and what those majors can get you job-wise. And I had seen various like music programs and I was like, oh, you know, I kind of do music as a hobby, but those sound very cool. I would very much enjoy doing them. And you know, the further that progressed, the more I was like, maybe I do want to do music. And listening to that song was kind of like the last straw on the camel's back. Just kind of broke it. Okay. So I uh, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to get rid of my plans and do this now. Did your parents tell you anything? I, they actually uh, like this better than me doing environmental science. Fun fact. Uh, Interesting. I don't know why. I guess they figured that uh, it kind of gives me a lot to fall back on. Because I intend on graduating with a degree in music technology, so that gives me a lot of like options. Okay. So, you know, in case something goes wrong, which, God forbid, uh, I have, uh, I could probably do some kind of like music engineering stuff, which would be fine. But uh, I still have the ability to make music for video games. Uh, so they, uh, my mom supported it. It took a long time for me to tell them that I was going to do that, but uh, I made sure to clear it with like my high school counselor at first. And she was like, yeah, that's a good major plan. And I was like, cool, now I can tell my parents. <laughs> <laughs> if you had to tell someone who is trying to struggle with they're doing something and perhaps their parents don't approve it or they're not sure whether they should do it, but they know in their hearts that they want to do it. From what you've learned, what would you tell them? I'd probably just tell them, think of like a, a realistic way to go about doing that. Because I could, uh, you know, easily just abandon uh, my like, you know, I could could have easily just abandoned uh, the environmental science just to do whatever. But I had to look into, uh, in order to convince myself and kind of my parents, I kind of looked into what kind of jobs you can get music wise. So that, you know, it's not uh, just a, like a dead end in case anything goes wrong. So probably just going about like a realistic way to follow what's in your heart. Because I feel like any kind of course of like, any kind of dream can be done realistically. If you so desire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like what exactly, like do you worry about? a future job or is that something that worries you? I, I've kind of always uh, worried about like future jobs 
my mom uh, works admissions at University of Chicago. Okay. So I've always uh, been kind of aware of like college and what comes after college, especially job wise. And I have two older brothers who uh, went to college, and one of them is now doing like a real adult jobs. So I've always <laughs> kind of been thinking about right. how to like realistically go about being an adult in the future. So having a so it became like a kind of a necessary thing. It just seemed kind of the smarter thing to do. I mean, do you care about like do you want to be an adult? Like a quarter Not adult? really, no. Not really? It scares me. But uh you know, it's a safety plan. Like I know what I want. But you know, just in case. Yeah, I think that, yeah, I think that's good because you you never know, right? So, like we we may we may have an idea of what we want to do, but at some point maybe you stop like liking music or like you stop really liking an aspect of making music and because of what you did I think uh, it's, it's a good decision I see I think actually I see a lot of people who they know what they want to do right but they're too insecure to just go do it like do something and I feel like when you say oh like I could do like sound engineering or music engineering and everything I feel like sure but I still think you're gonna do Video, uh, video game music at some point. Like no, no matter what happens, I feel like they're still gonna do it. And the reason why I know that, or I have a high certainty, is because you have done that already. So if, if you, like if you, if I go to you to, you to your YouTube channel, you have a bunch of songs, and they're all like insanely good. And like if you have done that already, it's probably what you want to do anyway. Because I see a lot of people. The difference is I see a lot of people, and they're like, oh, I want to do. I want to be a writer, or I want to be an artist. And when you ask them, okay, what have you written? Or what have you painted? And they don't really, like they haven't done any of the work to be the so-called writer or artist. So in, but in your case, you have done that already. So if you, I think something that I find interesting is that if you were to, because you know a lot, obviously, something I find interesting and always ask people who are, have learned and figure out ways to do so, even before coming to college, if you had to relearn to everything you know about making music, what exactly would you do specifically, meaning software, what YouTube channels, what anything, like step by step? So kind of like how to like start now? Yeah, like if you have to like restart everything you know, like with your knowledge and everything, what would you do now as a way to learn do now um i think there's a lot of uh, good youtube channels that teach you how to like do very basic mu music production um and there's a lot of uh very it be, like production now is become a, is becoming a lot more accessible to like the general public you know even a couple years ago it was kind of hard to do unless you had a lot of money and you could purchase uh very good programs like pro tools and uh, logic and stuff but now there's a lot of like in browser uh, DAWs which is a digital uh, audio workstation where you can you know just open up your laptop you know it doesn't even have to be like a great laptop it can be a Chromebook you can just open it open up just some random tab and just start making music um, so I would probably advise you know finding a nice online DAW uh, the one I use is Soundtrack or BandLab uh, and you can kind of start there. And I kind of started a little bit like blankly because I didn't really know how to navigate it. So pretty much kind of experiment, see what works for you. And then if you get some kind of like mojo rolling, uh, probably check out YouTube and see uh, like tips they have. Maybe just t maybe take a, like a class about it like a little production class uh, or even a theory class where you can learn like the specifics behind the music you're making. What's a uh, mojo? Mojo, uh, like momentum. Oh, momentum, okay, interesting. Do you know where where that comes from? No. Don't worry. They don't, I mean, it's just something people have used. <laughs> I figured I might as well use it. I couldn't fig find out a, a better word. I like it, it's, it's very stylish. What certain you know, I, I you know YouTube and, and a lot of these apps like algorithm like TikToks and everything they use a bunch of algorithms to figure out what to show you. I'm curious, 
what's on your YouTube like page? Like when you go to YouTube, what shows on on, on your YouTube? Or even if you go to TikTok, like what what's on your for, like for you page these days? A lot of actually a uh, <laughs> video game content. My uh, whole YouTube recommended is like video like video game let's plays or video game soundtracks. Okay, okay. <laughs> I do a lot of uh, video game stuff uh, as well as as mu as music stuff. My my TikTok for you page is all like guitarists playing songs and people making beats. Okay. So it's, it's a lot of the content I consume. I'm kind of in a, I'm kind of in a an echo chamber of like video games or music. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what you like. So even yeah. like the algorithm knows me. <laughs> <laughs> no, and like even like like that's that's even another sign that that's actually what you want to do. Uh, so, what do you think of the Charlie Puth uh, video thing? It's Charlie Puth, right? Yeah. He was the guy who was like making a song with with his uh, TikTok like audience, and he was like, oh, like so he was recording as he was making a new song, and it's something like. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> do you know this like that song, Charlie Puth, and like it's a new song maybe. I have not uh, listened to much uh, Charlie Puth. He's the one who did the the oh my god, I can't even remember the the See You Again song. Uh, Is no, that, that's that? it was okay. Wait, was it? It was. Oh. Okay, that's like the one thing I know him from. I know that he has perfect pitch. What does that mean? It means uh, pretty much if you hear a sound or a musical note, or pretty much anything, you can replicate it, or like know what it is. I, I do not have perfect pitch, I have Wait, so okay pitch. <laughs> so when you say he has it, that means he can? He can basically, um, if you tell him to sing like an A flat or an A sharp or whatever, or any note, he can do it pretty easily. I couldn't do that. Wait, what? Like, wait, so is, is it something you develop or something you... Some people are born with, like, better pitch than others, but a lot of people go through ear training, where they literally train their ears to recognize pitches. So, wait, so in, in Charlie's case... He probably has, has, has always had a good ear. Okay. He, he's a good musician, I acknowledge this. Um, but he also probably went through ear training when he was younger. Probably now, still. The grind don't stop. <laughs> Wait, so ear training, that means so he can train his brain to, de to detect exactly some sounds? And yeah. And what like, ability does that give you to like make music, for instance? Um, it it kind of gives you, I actually don't know, but like it makes like reading sheet music easier. Like you can sight sing a song without hearing like a, a note to begin with. Just helps. In the, I mean, I don't, I don't have a lot of good ear training. Okay. But uh, I had no idea about that. That's really cool. Yeah. I mean, that, that probably gives you a huge edge when it comes to a lot yeah. of musicians. Most definitely. They can just pretty much play anything that comes to mind without having to like really think about it. Wow. But so anyway, so in in the Charlie Puth video, what he did was over. I don't really know because I don't have TikTok, but. Over a couple, over a few days, what he did was he started making sounds. And I think at, at the end of the week, he literally compiled everything and he made a his whole new song. And I think he released it a couple months ago. That's pretty cool. I, I mean, I, 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 you should watch that because I think you'll find it really cool. He was like literally like flipping switches and like finding these really cool sounds. And I, if you say he has a perfect pitch, it probably has to do with that because I mean, probably, I mean, probably wasn't like completely true how what he was doing exactly. But the song was like, was really, um, I don't know, it was really like clicky or like really um, like addictive. I don't know, I don't know the word. Yeah, whatever. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, something I do want to ask you is that when you knew that you wanted to do music, that's a very specific thing, like you said. What went through your decision making when it came to finding a college in the right college? Um... So I have always, I kind of always wanted to go to Illinois. Uh, my older brother goes here. A lot of my family went here. I'm from Chicago originally, so, you know, pretty close. Uh, and I visited uh, a couple times to, you know, visit my brother. And I absolutely fell in love with just the general vibe. I always wanted the, like, 
regular college experience because I never really got like the regular like high school experience because my high school was kind of quirky I don't know it was in the middle of downtown Chicago so it's not like a it's not like a normal high school but so I wanted like the normal like college experience so you know I looked into Illinois and when I originally had looked into uh, applying to Illinois I don't have a lot of like good musical training behind me right. like pre like college and stuff all I did was uh, school of rock which is basically just guitar lessons for four to five minutes a week for a couple of years so I looked into uh, programs that I did not have to audition for and Illinois actually had one but I mean I didn't I didn't actually get into Illinois um, I got in through uh, the Parkland Pathways program which I'm grateful for I actually very much enjoy this program but uh, I kind of knew that I wanted to go to Illinois because I didn't want that big of a change, but I really wanted to, uh, you know, get out of Chicago. So it was kind of my deciding factor. I did apply to uh, various other colleges. I applied to, uh, I applied to like Columbia College Chicago. I applied to uh, University College Dublin because I could. Oh, wow. uh, so I applied to a, like a couple of schools that didn't require, I, re I applied to Rutgers. It didn't require an audition. It was kind of like something that, uh, it was a big factor in my choosing of colleges. So I pretty much seeked out schools that did not require an audition. And then I applied. Perfect, so you picked Illinois, but you didn't get in, but you're still here. Tell, like, tell us more about that. Okay, so uh, I, I didn't get in because I didn't have uh, technically enough musical background, which I get. Yeah. Um, and then the, uh, the GPA cutoff was higher than normal because a uh, period like this, a lot more people apply to colleges, so it's very competitive to get in right now. So, I, you know, I didn't take no for an answer. I was like, I'm gonna find out a way to go to Illinois, whether I started a college and transfer there, or, you know, figure something out. And uh, my one of my neighbors also didn't get in, but he also still really wanted to go. So <laughs> his mom and my mom kind of looked at uh, like colleges in the area and we found uh, Parkland College, which is like the local like community of junior college in uh, Champaign. And we found a program called Parkland Pathways to UAUC, where you are technically a full-time Parkland student. So I'm a full-time Parkland student, technically, uh, while also being a student at Illinois. So uh, I get to basically be pretty much an Illinois student because I get to stay in the dorms. Uh, I get to use Illinois facilities. I get to take Illinois classes. So, uh, and I have a, a really good like support system at Parkland and I take classes there. So the, I feel like the pros very much uh, outweigh any cons. It's a, I like the program. I love that initiative because I don't think I've ever met someone who really wanted to come to Illinois and got rejected and you find a way to through Parkland. So wait, so you go to Parkland? Like, how do you go there? Do you take a bus or like, how does that work? I um, so right now I'm technically only in uh, online classes at Parkland, so I don't have to go to like the main campus right now. I okay. will soon. Um, but last semester I I drove there. It's kind of uh, it's kind of near like where like the Target is, mm -hmm. like down like Prospect, that kind of area. So I would just drive there. But I know people that take the bus. Uh, that's pretty much the only other way to get there because it's not it's like far but it's not that far right i mean it's far if you're walking it's far if you're walking <laughs> yeah i think it would take me a very long time if i w tried to walk there it's probably like two hours i think or more or less honestly yeah but yeah it's like a f 15 20 minute drive from par the dorm yeah there you go interesting well like uh, yeah that's, that's really cool because i feel like a lot of people could actually enjoy that oh yeah i feel like it's a program that's like underutilized like i feel like more people should know about it because i i knew a lot of people in my high school that also got rejected from illinois and they just like went to other schools and i was like well i mean i still want to go here so i did you're here wait so you're here at parkland right i mean you're also here at illinois yes but you take you're taking these classes and everything and you eventually i'm assuming you you will transfer to oh yeah i get a uh I get a guaranteed transfer after two years, and I get guaranteed into the uh, the specific college. So I will uh, 
I will have a guaranteed spot in two years into the fine arts school. Guaranteed? Yep. No questions asked? Yep. No GPA requirements or anything? I mean, I can't fail out, you know? I mean, obviously, right, but... Technically, the, the transfer uh, GPA, re GPA requirement is like a 2.25. Okay. But I mean, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna get a 2.25. <laughs> yeah, fair I would enough. prefer not to. <laughs> <laughs> and then, is that for only music or for any other majors? They have a lot of other majors. Uh, they, they have. Uh, they don't have any business. Um, I don't. I think they only have like engineering. Like, it's undesignated, not undeclared, okay. and also LAS. It's undesignated. Wow. How many people have you met who are in, in this program with you? I uh, I've met a couple. I uh, so in some of my classes because I technically I take like my uh, my gen eds at Parkland. And a lot of the people taking the gen eds there are also other Parkland Pathway students. So I've met, I've made friends through those classes and there are Parkland students. Uh, I have my neighbor who I applied with, he got in to the program before I did. So that's how I knew I had a chance of getting in. So I applied. Uh, and then I've met just like, there's a couple of like just people on campus where I just happen to be talking to them. And I bring up that I do this program and they're, all, they're also like, oh, I do too. Right, because there's really no difference between being here and there. It just, it's it's like a it's pretty much just like a like a paperwork. Thing. Yeah, exactly. So so do you have an icon and everything, right? I'm assuming. I do. So there you go. So like, <laughs> awesome. No one looking at me back there. <laughs> <laughs> so there's really no difference between yeah. there and here. Oh, okay, interesting. And I don't have it on me, but I do have a Parkland uh, ID card as well. Wow. Okay. That's that's really that's really interesting. You know, what, what's something, okay, th th that's something like, that's really cool, but maybe that's something a little more esoteric. What's something you haven't told anyone? Not, like, not because it's a secret, but just something you haven't told anyone, just, just, like, just because. Just, like, in general, or about? Yeah, because, like, like, not necessarily because it's a secret, just something that you just, you just, I don't know, you just forgot. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's kind of loaded, because I don't know what I haven't told anyone. Um, probably... <laughs> Probably that like my uh, my screen time the like first week of a uh, okay. the first week of the semester was dangerously high like on my phone. How high? <laughs> it was probably like honestly like fourteen hours a day. Fourteen hours? Because I wasn't you know I didn't do much. Okay. I mean I don't think anyone really did much the like first week because we were all online. So my screen time was very high. I have logged. Oh wait, I know what it is. I have almost five hundred tabs open on Safari on my phone right now. On your phone? Yes. That many? Yes. Like, like Because 500 is the limit, so I, oh, so like <laughs> so I can't open anymore. So wait, so, so what do you do? You should literally just like close and open or like you just like reload? I mean, I just have a lot of tabs. I'm not, I'm not gonna get rid of them, I like my tabs. So like, did you ever go back and see it or what? Yeah, well I use the tabs, I use, a, I use an amount of All them. 500? Not all 500, but you know. Sometimes I'm like, oh, wait, I need to use that tab, so I'll go to the tab. <laughs> it's like a tab, you know, a tab like 200, like 40-something, you know? Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm probably the opposite. I don't like to have any, like, tabs. Like, as long as I have one, I just like, literally just go on the thing and just close all of them. I'm that way with my computer. I don't okay. like having computer tabs. But unless, like, I have to do, like, an essay or anything where, I'm, you know, I have all my research, I have all my, like, like citations, that's why I have my uh, all my tabs open. But I generally do not like to have tabs open in Safari. Like I'll have like homework and like YouTube open. As that's that's all. Is it true that math theory? Uh, no, no math theory. Is it true that music theory is a lot of uh, math heavy? I would say so. It depends on like what you're talking about. Cause like rhythm, uh, where you know, you know, you're counting beats in like a measure or in a like in a tune okay uh, a lot of the times uh, you have to deal with like a lot of different types of beats where like you know you have your standard beat which is just like four where it's like one two three four but you have different time signatures where it's like different ways of counting where so you have like like seven eight where when you count the beat it's like one two three one two three one two you know you're doing a lot of counting and then there's like subdivisions where it's just breaking things up into very small notes and you have to like consistently count them and you know sometimes if you know you're not fast or 
I don't know, rhythmic enough about counting them, it, it cuts you off and uh, it messes you up in the moment. Something I found interesting too is that a lot of the music or what we, what we so from, from the very, from my very limited knowledge of what music is, is that a lot of the, what music theory is, or a lot of the, or a l I mean, not music theory, but a lot of what we find pleasant to our ears, it are only like certain sounds. Like, do you have any theories of why that is? Or like, or like, like why do you think that is, or like? Um, I guess it's just, I feel like the sounds that a lot of people like prefer, like why like pop music sells, it's because you don't have a lot of like, like ugly chords in them. Cause there's, there's like ugly chords ugly sounds in music. What does that, what does that mean? Um, I don't know how, how exactly to describe it, but like, you can tell right away when like a, like a, you know, if I play a couple notes on a piano, you can tell, you know, right away if something doesn't sound right. You don't even need to be like tone deaf to know that, like. Yeah. So a lot of like music uh, has some of those ugly sounds, but a lot of like popular sounds that are more pleasing to the ears do not have a lot of those uh, ugly sounds, I guess. That's my, I, I feel like that's the way that makes sense to me. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. I think, I, so the other day I was talking to, in freshman year, actually, uh, not, I mean, not the other day, but last year. I was talking to this guy, literally like the first day I moved in, and he had like a guitar and everything. I was like, oh, like, I wanna know how to play the guitar, I never learned, but he, he was explaining to me like, because somehow he like self taught like music theory and everything, so he really knew like what the pleasant sounds were. So he was like giving me a whole lesson about what was pleasant, and he was like with the guitar, little telling me, okay, like if you do this one, it's like pleasant. If you do the other one, it's like not pleasant. And I was, so I never thought of really like about that. So as you as you make music, is this, is this something you think about? Of course, the, the the type of music that you make perhaps is a little different. But do the same principles apply? And do you think about this, the ugly chords or the pretty chords? I try to, I will say, I do try to put uh, more of the, uh, the pretty sounds in my music. But, you know, I will not stray from uh, uglier ones. I feel like they add depth to songs sometimes. But uh, the, uh, the ugly sounds, they don't sell well. <laughs> but, you know, you kind of need the ugly sounds, especially in video game music, because you know, the ugly sounds are crucial in like a boss fight. How, how are you gonna communicate that? Uh, I mean, you're gonna see the boss, you can know the boss is there, but it adds kind of an edge to the song. So what you describe ugly, as ugly chords is basically deep. Like it's not deep, it's, I guess, because they add a, they do add depth, because you know. Like, if you have a piano, right? You know that like in this side, a lot like, thinner uh, is, is that a good way to describe it like in this side it's like a lot like it's higher it's higher there you go it's higher and this one's a lot lower, lower. like ding and then boom right i mean that's technically not like an ugly sound i feel like that's just a it's very it, that's okay, just so a that lot of be space between the notes ugly sounds are just kind of like they're they're dissonant where it's you can just they kind of clash they just don't go well that good together, but people, they like the dissonance, so they, they layer up, layer them up, and they're like, I'm gonna use this. I will say, there's there's no depth in a song that's just ugly sounds, you kinda have to have a mix of both to add real depth. Did you ever think we'll get, we're gonna get to a time where humans stop making songs and it's all like computer generated? Like, have you seen anything like that? I mean, we do have the technology for uh, computer generated music right now. There's a lot of programs where you can pretty much just push a button and it will make a song. But I feel like with the way people are, a lot of the times they do enjoy when a human has made something. So they, uh, I don't feel, I feel like we'll see an increase of like computer made music, but I don't think we'll uh, completely get rid of like what people make. Because it adds a human touch. How about if an AI, like a, like an artificial intelligence, would make all the decisions and just make the song? Instead of like just like computer generated, meaning like you wouldn't even know that who is making the song, but like you would know it's a robot, right? It's making robot. Yeah. It's making. I don't see that in 
my lifetime. I hope not. Um, but I mean, that's kind of the same thing that's happening in like every trade yeah, industry right. now, mm -hmm. pretty much. So long as we leave room for humans, I think we'll be okay. <laughs> What's your shirt about? My shirt is uh, it's merch for the band uh, LCD Sound System. Okay. They're uh, they're my favorite band. They're kind of an electronica dance band. They uh, started in Brooklyn in like the early two thousands. Uh, and they, they make some very good music, and I was at their uh, their concert over uh, Thanksgiving break uh, in Brooklyn. I was visiting uh, my brother. They're very good. Uh, I enjoy the concert very much. Do you think they play? Do you think they play a lot of ugly chords? Or they do. They uh, they just played. They played uh, SNL like literally like last Saturday. Oh really? And uh, they they did. <laughs> one, of, one of their, uh, I don't know, I wouldn't say uglier songs, because I like the songs, but uh, other people do not, uh, and they were getting flamed on Twitter for that. <laughs> because they're, of the, yeah, go, go, go. Because of, like, the, the ugly sounds. They're, they're very, they're an experimental group, where they, they do a lot of just, like, they're very interesting. I, I don't even know how to describe it, because a lot of the songs they make, they're just kind of, like, hitting things. What do, you, what do you mean? I don't know. Because they do a... There's like... When they perform, it's technically... It's... The music it was originally made by like the lead singer who kind of just does everything. Because he, he used to be a DJ. Right. And then he kind of formed this little group where... With uh, probably like... Seven people? I don't remember the exact number. And they all... Just kind of... They play their individual parts and... They do a lot of uh, interesting like sounds. I don't know. It's they're good in my eyes, but I it's hard to digest for some people. Did you ever listen to uh, like nineteen? I, I'm not sure when the first song was made necessarily, but I, I guess probably like nineteen forties, nineteen fifties. Do you like? Do you find the music interesting or like like the the contrast? And what this says about a society, I think I feel like that's something interesting too. That a lot of music reflects what our society is thinking or what our society values. Did you ever think about that? I mean, I will say a lot of music is made as a form of protest. Uh, so like a lot of the times, music actually rejects what society likes. Like I will say, like Elvis Presley, okay. greatest like you know probably most famous like rock musician of all time. People did not like him. Uh, when he was first, when he like first came out, because like rock music was this like new thing, uh, and it was like the fifties, and his music just sounds old now. I will say it's good. I like some of his songs, but it sounds old. You know, it's dated. But uh, at that time, it was new and experimental and rejected. Uh, they didn't really do a lot of that in like the forties. Some forties music is like cool, like old like movie songs. I don't listen to it a lot of the time, but a lot of the stuff is cool. Uh, it kind of can you restate your question? No, I mean I'm just saying that, like, so that's something that's interesting too because I think from how I see it, I feel like a lot of music reflects the values of the time instead yeah. of pro okay, like yeah. protesting. Yeah. But you you actually said the opposite. Yeah. Like. Could you find like it, de it depends okay. so pop music uh like what is popular at the time reflects kind of like what society is like versus like like genres that were made out of counterculture because like in the 40s everything everything that was popular was very much like cut and clean with society so you know at the time you have a lot of uh songs that are about men and women you know women doing the cooking and cleaning and all that <laughs> but, I mean, it will really? say it does reflect society at the time. Wow. Or just, like, a lot of, uh, like, love songs, specifically, like, I'm a man and I love my wife. and Or, you know, if a woman sings, it's, I'm a woman and I love my husband, you know. So, it, uh, it tends to reflect society at the time. Where do you think the future, so, you, you know, at the time, 1950s, Elvis Presley was, like, considered a weird person. People didn't like yeah. him, whatever. Right now, what's something we're gonna look 
you know, 50 years. Like, oh my God, that was like, that was like you know, perhaps in you know, the 2080s or something, people are gonna love this song, but like those, th- people, people are gonna love that music, but at this moment of time, people don't really like it. Do you have any guesses or? Um, probably like, probably like electronic and stuff. That's what I would say, because I feel like as like, I mean, music, like genre wise has expanded like so much, you know, since like the 40s compared to like how I think it will expand in the future. Just because there's so much variation in what is like popular now, you know, pretty much every popular like artist right now, like Travis Scott and Dua Lipa do not sound the same at all. They're very different styles. I mean, they're not very different, but like, I think they sound different. Actually, Travis Scott was on a Dua Lipa song. <laughs> no, I'm thinking. I'm thinking of the baby. Never mind. Okay, okay. I mix okay. them up. Um, but like, I think their music is considerably different versus like one is like trap and one is like pop, like bubblegum pop, not bubblegum pop, but like very poppy, bright, cheery. Uh, and there's a lot of variation. So they could very much, and they could very much sound dated, you know, in the future. But I think that there's a lot of. Uh, variation in musical styles where I think those specific genres will expand themselves and uh, I think they'll still be liked in the future. And I think at some point what perhaps we, ha- we are seeing already is a lot of the overlap that we're seeing. Like the f- example that, I, that comes to mind would be Old Town Road, which is a perfect combination of like country music and rap music. And when you combine these two, of course, if you know how to combine them and avoid what you said, the ugly chords and everything, you get a super, you know, popular song. Yeah, I I do like Old Town Road. Um, It's a good song. (laughs) Um, I I do like the overlap between genres like that. Uh, I think that's something that should happen more. It should have more rap country. (laughs) I mean, you like electronic music. I do. I mean, I like, I like most types okay. of music. I, I think I have a very broad uh, taste in music where I can, you know, most genres I generally enjoy. Um, but I just tend to center around, like, electronic and, like, alternative music. What do you mean by alternative? Uh, like, alt-rock. Like, okay. I'd say, like, like Arctic Monkeys, they're, like, alt-rock. I'm not actually a big Arctic Monkeys fan, but I like a couple of songs. Okay, but, okay. like, that's, like, the kind of genre they are. I like do like that genre a lot. How could you combine? I guess why would it be a good candidate to combine electronic music with? Hmm. I've seen a lot of. I don't think it would be a very popular song, but I've seen a lot of a uh, mix between electronic music and like hard rock, hmm. where it's like, or even like metal music. I've seen a lot of that, uh, but they're not songs that sell well because. They're not, uh, like, metal music isn't, like, pop music now. Like, it's not very celebrated. It's not like it was in the 80s, you know. But uh, it would be interesting. I would love to see more electronic and metal-infused songs. But uh, they, uh, they, don't, they don't sell well, but I like them. You, know, you may think I'm crazy, but something I think a lot about, but I've been thinking for years, is that I'm very careful to the music I listen to. Why? I have a theory, I don't really know, I haven't really done a lot of deep research, but my intuition tells me that the type of music you listen to affects your brain in some way, or your behavior, or or perhaps I'm not wording this correctly, but something happens. Uh, I'm, I, of course, I'm not saying I know exactly what happens, but is, is, is there some truth to that? Like, do you feel that, or do you or do you think I'm just playing out, like, straight up crazy? I believe it. I feel like it's true to an extent, because I've seen, uh, like, there used to be a lot of, uh, like, flack over, like, uh, more, like, grungy genre, where, or, like, metal genres, where people would think that that type of music makes you an aggressive person, which it generally, it doesn't. Um, but it can, you know, heighten how you're feeling in the moment or, and you know, if you're feeling like sad at the moment, it might make you sadder. 
and <laughs> might mess up your week if you decide to listen to more sad music, you know, or if you choose to listen to like very like happy stuff. I feel like it could make you an overall happier person at the time, you know. Um, I'm not saying it's a foolproof method to make yourself happier, but who knows. Um, but sometimes, I guess if you get really into a genre of music, it can kind of change you. Because, like, also, with a lot of music, uh, it comes with, like, subcultures. So, like, early 2000s, a lot of people really, like, or, like, just in general, uh, you know, if you listen to a lot of, like, goth or emo music, you're probably going to get more involved with those subcultures because it's kind of like the community around that music. So I guess it kind of does shift you into that way, but other types of music aren't exactly like those. What subculture are you are you heavily involved in? Honestly, I don't know. I used to, <laughs> when I was uh, in like eighth grade, I, I identified as emo. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm ashamed of that, but I kind of am sometimes. I think it's because I was cringy when I was in eighth grade. But, like, who wasn't, you know? <laughs> um, but now I kind of don't really identify with any particular subculture. I think, you know, I'm just me. I'm not, like, overly alt. I'm not overly, like, pop and just, I'm normal, you know? I think it's because I, I listen to so much, which I'm not, you know, saying it's, like, better or anything. It's just how I am. What, um streaming platform do you use to, to listen to music? I use Spotify. I tend to, Spotify is my go-to, um, but if there's not a, if there's a song that I really enjoy that I cannot find on Spotify, I usually use like YouTube to listen to it, or I'll bite the bullet and I'll buy it on iTunes, or I use SoundCloud. But SoundCloud, I use very sparingly, but uh, it's whenever I want to like listen to a song that's not on Spotify, but I don't want to like have my phone out, you know? like background because YouTube just stops playing when I leave the app or yeah true 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 I'm not I'm not gonna pay for a better YouTube yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I will pay for any service like pretty much any service as lo so long as I don't get ads except for YouTube I don't know why it's my like as much as I hate the double ads I will not give money to YouTube but you know you'd also the the ads also help the people making the videos yeah in some yeah. cases what was your number one song on Spotify last year? Last year, it was a song called, uh, so I, uh, before like October, and before like halfway through like September, I was using my mom's Spotify account because I didn't feel like paying. Uh, now I pay, but uh, on my mom's account, because I, I was pretty much the main user of that account, it was uh, Everlong by the Foo Fighters, but on my personal account that I started in like October, it was uh, Leprosy by White Ring, which is just, it's like a electronic, like, hyper-pop group. <laughs> it's a very good song. I, I, I don't know if most people would like it, but I like it. And that's more than enough. Yeah. Because, like you said, you're, you're uniquely, like, Nora. So. Yeah, I'm me. <laughs> Besides music, what are you into these days? What gets you excited? What gets me excited? Um, video games. Um, I do, I like video games. I like, uh, I, I watch a lot of comedy stuff. On YouTube, I like to watch uh, stand-up specials. I like uh, various shows. I'm a big fan of uh, Law & Order SVU. I don't watch any new episodes. I think the show has gone bad. I think it needs to end. <laughs> um, okay. But a lot of the older stuff, I, you know, I watch that. You know, school. I mean, it's not like something that gets me super excited, but that, that's fine. <laughs> Do you feel like you're learning useful things that could help you with your music career? Yeah, I am. Um, I'm kind of... This semester has been weird because it's kind of been on and off with various like snow days and being online and stuff. Like I know we're almost at midterms, but a part of me is still very convinced it's like the third week of school, <laughs> which is not very good. But uh, almost done actually. <laughs> yeah. Halfway through, I think like four, like week seven or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um, but it. Uh, I I think I'm learning. I'm learning. Uh some cool like ear training stuff. I'm learning how to do uh, rhythmic dictation where they'll play a rhythm and I have to write down what the rhythm is. And just regular dictation where they'll play like notes and I have to write down what they are. Do you feel like that's a, like a different language? A different language? Reading music is, uh, yeah. Cause you know, you're, you're reading it. It's like, it's like learning a new alphabet where it's like, 
it's something kind of foreign to you because again I didn't really have a lot of like theory background before I really started here so it's it's very it's still kind of new to me even though you know I've done this for now a semester and a half oh my god <laughs> um I'm getting better at it but it is kind of like learning a new language where I will still very much like hesitate before I like write something down or like interpret it that's very cool I do want to learn to play music I want to learn the well, I want to I want to learn three things the first one would be the piano I find that super super interesting and then after that I want to learn how to play the guitar I think it's super interesting super super challenging and then after I, I know a little bit of like the tones and the pleasing sounds I do want to learn about music theory which I think would help me it will I think I mean I would I would love the math behind it which is probably a lot of cosine and sine function that this is, is that true or do you know anything about that maybe yeah okay whatever but <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah I, I do find it interesting I think I, I want to do it at, at some point and I haven't done it and it's something I do want to do oh yeah I really want to take like a, like a piano lesson I would love to learn I, I know I know how to spot the keys and I know how to make a few chords but other than that I'm kind of blind to piano and you know the hardest thing is actually I wish that I don't know much but the hardest thing is actually not playing but also having the flexibility to actually play oh yeah because it turns out you need to be really flexible to actually play the different keys so a lot of hand coordination oh yeah I, I'm, my god I'm the idea of uh, putting like having both my hands doing completely separate things on a piano respect it but uh it's very foreign i mean guitar kind of is separate things but it feels different i guess because i'm used to playing guitar that's interesting so to to end our conversation here we're gonna have two little fun segments the first one i'm going to pull out my phone i'm going to go to my music uh, app and you're and you're going to tell me exactly like anything interesting about behind like you know like music theory like anything interesting behind it the song so we're going to play three songs hopefully they're not too bad hopefully i know the songs <laughs> <laughs> i don't think i listen to too too much of an esoteric like music but i'm gonna i'm gonna, I'm gonna do random so i don't know what's gonna come come up here so the first one here <laughs> why is that funny oh uh, <laughs> it is funny because that is my song <laughs> I, I i wrote that song <laughs> yeah you did i did i mean i didn't i didn't you know i didn't write it but i i made it is there anything interesting about it like any backstories or anything um pretty much uh as with essentially all of my songs i kind of started it by going into my DAW, just opening an instrument and just kind of plucking for inspiration that I found something I like. Um, I think originally with the base of this, I had wanted to make like kind of like a soundtracky song. So it originally had been like a vocal tone behind okay. that, uh, where it's just kind of like, like, a, like a choir. Mm -hmm. So I took that uh, and then I was like, I don't like this anymore. So I changed uh, the instrument to like some like techno-y thing. Uh, and then I kind of expanded from that where I, and then I just layered things until I was satisfied with what I did. And then I edited it, like did a, like mixing, equalization, panning, the works. And you did all of that using? Soundtrack. Soundtrack, okay, there it, is. And that's also like browser-based and everything. It's browser-based. It is free, but there is a premium version and I pay for the premium version. Well, I mean, you know, pros need the premium one. Yes. So. All right, next one here. I know that I know this song, but I don't know who this is. That's... Oh, it's Bastille. This, this, uh... I don't listen to a lot of Bastille, but Spotify thinks that I do. So I have a, I have a, uh... A daily mix so this was back on my mom's old account okay. but i had a daily mix where it was generally like like i'm not even kidding like every other song was a bastille song and i don't know how it happened but neither of us listened to bastille that much i love pompeii though i uh i did school rock uh back in chicago so uh and one of the songs that i got to play was pompeii 
You did? That was pretty oh, cool. Oh, wow. Yeah. Do you know the backstory behind it? Pompeii? Yeah. The, like the volcano? Okay, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's a super cool. I should write a little, little book about cool. it. It's cool. I have always wanted to go to uh, Pompeii, but I've heard that it's kind of like a very touristy thing where you can actually visit uh, other villages that are not Pompeii that got like the Pompeii treatment where they Pompeii were treatment. hit. You know, yeah, we're, I mean, you know. Yeah, no, no. I, Pompeii I know was hit by a volcano and yeah. everyone uh, was kind of <laughs> immortalized. I mean, technically they were killed immediately, but immortalized in the form of statues with the yeah. ash. But there's uh, other villages around uh, Mount Vesuvius mm-hmm. that uh, also got that. So you can visit those instead if you want uh, less tourists around you. Good tip. <laughs> you know, I, I think probably one of my favorite songs right now is our band, actually, Bastille. Bastille. They yeah. actually release, well, one thing would be is I really like the a lot of the backstory behind these songs. Like Pompeii is a good one. And they actually release a new album. I think, something, I think it's called Back to the Future. And it's really about how VR, the metaverse, how all these technologies may, may affect the future. So there's a lot of reference to, to like 1984, like George R. Orwell, um, Brave New World by Aldrich Huxley. It's, it's, I like it because it's, it's really like, it's like fast paced, maybe, no, I don't think electronic, but I like the story behind it. Oh yeah, I, I love a song that has a story behind it. That was very cool. All right, last song here. This one's a random one, but. You probably haven't listened to that one, but. I've never heard this song. Um, I like it. Um, I like the, uh, the like kind of drum sound. It doesn't sound like a traditional like drum sound that people technically use. Um, can you play that again? It's very, it's a very interesting drum sound. I don't, I don't feel like I hear a lot like that, but I feel like it's probably uh, someone like they got like I don't know like a, oh, I cannot remember what they're called, but like one of those like circular like hand drums. They probably got people to come in and play those, or they probably played them themselves. It's probably one of the more fun parts of music production is like noodling around with like the fun instruments and then putting them in Random songs. Things. Yeah. Yeah, so this guy, he's actually from, yeah, he's from Venezuela, like where I'm from. Oh, nice. And no, but he, he actually lives in the U.S. and he makes like English songs. And this one's like, and it's an English song. And uh, that's the name, Danny Ocean, I think. Oh, I have, uh, I know, I've heard of him. I know, like one of his songs. Uh, not that one, but it's uh, one of his other songs. Yeah, I don't know. Cool. cool. Yeah, so it's a very interesting I mean, that's, I've never never thought about like it could actually it, the, the beginning of this song could ha- could actually have been like some drums or something. Interesting. Yeah. All right. And the the other feature we're gonna do is we're, we're like we're gonna play a little game, and it's gonna be underrated, overrated. So I'm gonna ask you, for, for, for instance, like something you're gonna say overrated, or underrated. Okay. The Beatles, underrated or overrated? Overrated. Tell me more. I I know that they. Uh, you know, they revolutionized most things about music. Uh, they revolutionized uh, multi-track recording. They literally started like the trend of making loops in songs. Uh, with one of their songs, it's like I don't remember what it's called, but it's off of Revolver. Um, but in the end of the day, I I don't I don't like many of their songs. Uh, my favorite song by them is actually the really popular one that like people don't really like hey jude it's such a good song but uh that's probably my favorite one too it's so good i like i like a good sing-along song where it's like you know you and your buddies can just sit there and sing along even though the the sing-along part is like six minutes long uh but i know a lot of people who just love the beatles a little bit too much and i'm like i they're good (laughs) i'm not not gonna I'm not I'm not ride or die for the Beatles, but some people are. And like people who uh there are a lot of people who like their favorite band is the Beatles and they think it's like a unique trait, but they're like one of the most popular bands in the world. Like ever, yeah. <laughs> Bollywood music. Bollywood music. Probably underrated because I don't listen to it enough. I, I've heard a lot i I mean I I don't know any like specific songs, but I hear like various like I sh- I'll hear them on like TikTok and stuff, like oh, in really? the background. <laughs> and I always mean to like go and listen to it more, 
but I, I never get around to it because I, I get a lot of things to listen. I need to listen to still. Um, but I would definitely love to hear more. Uh, that's something. That's something interesting. Like getting inspiration from a lot of like different countries because probably each different country has a different type of music. Oh yeah. Different remix. Obviously, like you know, all like the sounds are all the same, like in in a way. But everyone has a different like like twists. Yeah, and everyone has their different uh, interpretation of music too. I feel like a lot of people, when they interpret music, especially from other countries, they do it under a more Western lens, and they probably shouldn't be doing it. So they all have like they have different like scales that they tend to use, uh, and they uh, they have different like ways of like perceiving rhythm where it's not like our like Eurocentric way. So it's it's interesting to uh, listen to other cultures' music. Portland College. Parkland College, uh, underrated. I do think more, a lot of, you can take, uh, like a lot of, I know like just regular like full-time U of I students will take classes at Parkland and they tend to like it. I feel like the teachers there, um, because all the classes are very small, they do have like lectures, but pretty much all of the classes I've taken, like it's max like 20 people where I can like, I can, you know, connect with the teacher very easily like uh, my uh, English class that I took last semester, I would stay late just to talk to the teacher because I was kind of like friends with her. I was with like the closest desk. And it's kind of harder to do that here. You can still do it with like your teachers here, but it's harder to do it. And the resources there, it's actually, it's a pretty campus. Uh, it's kind of, it doesn't have a lot of windows, uh, which I learned like the architect made it that way because you know, there's it's a cornfield around it. I mean, it's cornfield around here but it's not that good of a view. But it's pretty, it's very accessible too. It won an award for how accessible it was. Yeah, and I, I don't know because I've only been there at night, but they also have a planetarium. They do, yeah. I, uh, I really wanna go to the planetarium because I was looking at, I like trivia a lot, so I like knowing like tiny facts about it, but it's the, uh, the second largest planetarium in Illinois. Really? The one at Parkland. Yeah, I went there before December before Christmas break. And it's really nice, yeah, very few people, and the person like running the thing was actually really brilliant, and she actually developed the whole system, like she wrote all the whole program, and it's insane, because it's super big, and also the, the quality of the simulations, it's a bunch of programming, and it's insane. It's really well made, so I would highly recommend. Nice, I wanna go. Like going there, yeah. I. I I would totally recommend going there. Nice. New weekend plans. Go to the planetarium. It's pretty cheap too. It's like five bucks, I think. Oh, nice. Probably probably a lot less than uh, going to the Adler in Chicago. That You've one's probably there? very expensive. I've been there. I've been on there on like field trips and stuff. It's probably the, the only one I haven't been there, actually. Like, I've been to pretty much everything. Like, the museums and everything. But I haven't been in in that one. I, last time I went, I was like, like first grade. So I haven't been there in a hot minute. No, actually, I was a summer camp counselor between my freshman and sophomore years of high school, and we went on a field trip there. Interesting. And then LCD sound systems. Underrated. They do have several million Spotify listeners, but I think that more people should listen to them. It takes a while to get into them, because I first heard them when I was in like seventh grade, and I was like, they're kind of they're dumb, because my dad's a fan of them. My dad shares like 90% of my music taste, so I get into a lot of like music because of him. But, you know, I had some of the songs because I had like the family iTunes account on my phone. So I had access to some uh, LCD songs. And so I listened to a few, I had like a favorite and I kind of just was like, oh, this is a band and I know some of their songs. And then I mentioned to my dad that I'd listened to some of their songs and he was like, oh, listen to more of their songs. And I was like, okay. And then when I was a freshman in high school, he took me to their concert at uh, Aragon Ballroom in Chicago. And it was one of the best concerts I've ever been to. Like, I don't dance. I'm not a very dancey person. You know, like concerts, I'm in the way back and I'm, you know, I'm bopping my head. That's pretty much it. I am not a big, big dancer. But at this concert, I was, you know, I, I was a dance machine. I could have been on Dancing with the Stars or whatnot. I mean, it was packed, so I couldn't really, like, move. Right. But it was very fun. I very much enjoyed it. They're a band that once you, like, appreciate how they are live, you begin to appreciate their songs a lot more. Because th I feel like they're better for live music than they are for just like regular studio recordings. Even though their studio recordings are still fantastic. But uh, 
I very much got into them after that, and I just kept listening to more and more of their music, and then I am here with them being my favorite band. And then last one, Getman, uh, Getman style? Is that what it's called? Getman? Getman style? Gangnam style? Yeah. That one. Ooh, I don't know if it's overrated, because I like it via nostalgia, because... I mean, it's probably the, the isn't, isn't it the most popular song ever? Probably. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it was, like, one of the most... I mean, there's a lot of, like... I feel like old people don't know that song. Like, I can't, I can't imagine my, my grandparents like that song, or know it. But I feel like it's still very popular with, like, even, like, my parents, like, younger generations. Okay, how, how about, you know, a recent one that I think broke many records? Despacito. Despacito? Um... I, f- I, I feel like overrated. the English version is overrated. The version in English with, uh, Justin, with Bieber? Justin Bieber. Okay. I don't like Justin Bieber, so okay. that's kind of a thing right. that plays into it. Um, but I feel like there's a lot of songs where they were originally like just in like Spanish, and I like the Spanish version, and then they like sell it to like American pop stars, and they do an English version. I'm like, I don't like the English version. I'm that way with uh, <laughs> Mi Gente, that other song that's kind of popular. I don't remember how it goes. But I like the like full Spanish version, uh, and I also like the full. I do uh, enjoy the uh, full Spanish version of Despacito, because I, uh, when it was really popular, I uh, was a summer camp counselor. You know, it was that summer, and we played a lot of uh, Just Dance. So actually, it took me a long time to hear the English version because I'd only listened to the Spanish version. It was li- playing Just Dance with uh, the kids at my camp. Right. <laughs> so I. Uh, so I think that the uh, English version is overrated. Spanish version probably underrated, but it also probably had like a billion, like Spotify streams. So. Oh, definitely a lot more. I think. Yeah. It like broke like many records. Oh yeah, I bet. So it's probably rated. Like neither over or under. Rated. Okay, interesting. All right. Thank you so much, Nora, for for coming on the show and, and you sharing me. your story uh, with us. And I really hope that one day I don't know maybe three years, five years, whatever, how long it will be, I see you either working, making music, uh, like game, like, I, how do you call it, like video game music? Video game music. Making video game music, and I don't know, making a, I'm, I, don't, I don't really play games, but for some reason I'm playing a game, and then I listen to a song, and it turns out to be made by Nora. So that, that would be a cool story too, to tell friends and my kids who know. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, I hope I'm in that position too, you know? (laughs) All right. Thank you very much. And now you'll be listening to my favorite Nora song. Enjoy.